For much of the past century, polio struck fear and anxiety deep into the Australian community. The introduction of vaccines in the late 50s and 60s practically eliminated the virus from developed nations, but it continued to attack unprotected children in poor countries. This year marks a renewed and intensive three-year effort to finally rid the world of the virus through the single biggest internationally coordinated public health project the world has ever known. And critical to its creation were two men, an American doctor and a Queensland knight. John Taylor reports. Australian scientists now call it the forgotten disease. But for much of last century, polio inspired fear. Waves of polio epidemics struck down thousands of children. The consequences could be horrendous. Hospitalisation, paralysis, wasted limbs, iron lungs and sometimes death. With the arrival of polio vaccines from the 1950s and mass vaccination, Australia and much of the developed world quickly became polio free. But half the world's children were left unvaccinated. That was until a former Queensland accountant and an American doctor put their heads together. Well, Sir Clement's uh, involvement was absolutely essential. Well, my part was pretty small, really, you know. I, I just had an idea. Yeah, it's a bit unusual, I think, to be 60 years in America. 88-year-old Sir Clem Renoff was knighted during the Joe Bielke peterson years for his services to the community. For 60 years, he's been a member of the Namble Rotary Club. He was inspired to help others by a childhood in North Queensland during the Great Depression, when he watched his parents' kindness to those forced to roam the country looking for work. And these people were pretty honest people, but just poor. And they would come up, and we had a cow, and we had uh, poultry. And my parents didn't have much, but they shared it with these people. And uh, it's affected me. In 1978-79, he was Rotary's world president. Please be seated and launched a program allowing and encouraging clubs to combine for major projects. The fight against smallpox showed diseases could be eradicated. No one was really thinking about ridding the world of polio until Sir Clem was returning from a meeting in the Philippines. And on the way back on the aircraft, I picked up a magazine, The Reader's Digest, and there I read for about uh, the same money has been spent on two Australian warships I'd seen in the harbour, uh, WHO had eradicated smallpox. So when I got back to our headquarters, I telephoned Dr John Sever, who was one of my district governors, who was then the head of the Infectious Diseases Division of the National Institutes of Health in Washington, D.C. I said to him, John, is there anything we could do similarly to that? My response to him was that we should focus on a uh, program specifically targeted to polio in accomplishing a program to help immunize the children of the world. We will be providing a vital role in bringing vaccines throughout the world to countries and populations that had no immunization. But polio was too big, some thought, for Rotary. And we sent our General Secretary across to see, talk to WHO about this, to see whether we could tie in with their expanded program of immunization against the six communicable diseases. And they received us um, politely, but they didn't think any NGO could last the distance. Undeterred, Rotary members raised $247 million and got to work. 12 million people were vaccinated in Mexico, 27 countries in South America. Faced with such obvious success, the World Health Organization came back to them. The World Health Organization was meeting in Geneva and they asked Rotary if we would join them on a worldwide program to eradicate polio. And Rotary willingly accepted this. We would join with the World Health Organization and then, of course, with UNICEF and with the Centers for Disease Control here in Atlanta. In 1988, the Global Polio Eradication Initiative was launched using the resources of all four organisations, national governments and other donors. At that time, wild polio virus was endemic in more than 125 countries. Now it's only left in a handful. With this um, 
joint effort, the reduction of numbers of cases from what it was in 1988 of about 350,000 cases of paralytic polio to uh, this last year, just a little over 1,000 cases. The organization is also in the midst of raising more than $200 million to match more than $355 million offered in grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. After so many years, polio is nearly defeated and the dream of two men realised. We're very pleased, but we want to achieve that goal. I think that polio will be eradicated. We'll, I just hope I live long enough, John, to see a polio-free world. John Taylor on a remarkable partnership, and that's the program for tonight. Join us at the same time tomorrow, but for now, good night.